I'm Alex Baropoulos. I'm professor of medicine at the Zucker School of Medicine at uh, Hofstra Northwell in New York. And I'm here on the Clock Chronicles to discuss the recent publication of our CORE-19 registry study that was published in Blood. The CORE-19 study was a large prospective multicenter registry uh, conducted in our Northwell multi-hospital health system that examined thromboembolic outcomes and mortality in 4,906 adult inpatients that were hospitalized during the first phases of the pandemic from March through May 31st, 2020. And interesting to note, while blood clots have been observed in COVID-19 patients during their hospitalization, and especially if they are in intensive care unit settings, there has been little and very conflicting data on the risk of uh, blood clots, such as venous thromboembolism, arterial thromboembolism, including stroke and myocardial infarction in the post-hospital discharge uh, period. So this study showed three important things. The first is that uh, major thromboembolic disease and mortality was much higher than appreciated, so that our CORE-19 registry showed a venous thromboembolic event rate at 90 days of approximately 1.5%, an arterial thromboembolic rate of 1.71%, and an all-cause mortality rate of nearly 5%, show an overall rate of 7.1% or so of this um, multi-component outcome. So that's the first thing, that the risk of major thromboembolism and death is much higher than appreciated in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. The other thing that our registry study showed is that several key risk factors for these major thromboembolic events and death were described and independently associated with these outcomes. And these included advanced age, the presence of cardiovascular risk factors such as coronary artery disease and carotid occlusive disease and peripheral arterial disease, a personal history of thrombotic disease, chronic kidney disease, a stay in the intensive care unit, and also an elevated BTE risk score, namely the improved DD risk score that has previously been developed and validated by our team and incorporates a fairly new biomarker, an elevated D-dimer that is able to predict short to medium term thrombotic risk. And the last point of this registry is that the use of post-discharge anticoagulants, mostly at prophylactic doses, reduced the risk of both major thromboembolic events and death by 46%. And indeed, as the major component of this composite outcome was all-cause mortality, this suggested that uh, since uh, all-cause mortality was modifiable by the use of post-discharge extended thromboprophylaxis, uh, that thrombotic mechanisms played a major role for this all-cause mortality in the immediate post-discharge uh, period. So this is an, an important study. It's the largest study to date of post-discharge outcomes in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. And in my view, it clearly shows that in uh, patients who are hospitalized with COVID-19 and have these high-risk features, as I mentioned, and are also at low bleeding risk, uh, these patients would benefit from a strategy of post-discharge thromboprophylaxis, preferably with a direct oral anticoagulant to reduce the risk of major thrombosis and death. Of course, these results need to be uh, verified uh, by randomized controlled trials and the post-discharge period that are ongoing. Thank you.